Hi guys, doing a bit of analysation of the promo for episode 3 of Game of Thrones. Um, I'm just going to go through and just give my opinion on what I've seen in the trailer and what it means to me and what I think it's going to mean for the uh, rest of the season, more episodes to come, that kind of thing. So, so right away we start off with Danny saying, I was born to rule the Red Seven Kingdoms and I will. And you've got the nice shot of the three dragons going above Dragonstone, acting like sort of sentries, you know, making sure that no one surprises stacks Dragonstone. But it sounds like she's really feeling the malice of losing her Dornish and um, Greyjoy forces in the ship battle we saw with uh, Euron in the, in the previous episode. So it seems like the thing is with Danny now, her two main forces or armies have been crippled. I don't know if there's many survivors. We'll see a secret shot later that may have uh, Theon coming back. Um, but it, it sort of made her more, how should we say, vulnerable. The fact that um, some of her main supporters have been already taken out by Cersei, it sort of flips the power balance that uh, when she's getting all the, uh, Cersei's getting all the lords together uh, of Westeros to band together against the foreign invasion and this sort of tips the balance in the way that Cersei's new um, alliance with the Greyjoys with Euron um, shows that she's a force to be reckoned with. And also you've got the last army slim play as well. So it just puts Bridani on the back foot, kind of, which is sort of going to lead into when Jon Snow comes, I believe. Right. So. <clears throat> oh, sorry, guys, I've got a bit of a thing. Um, but yeah, you see uh, Euron here and... As you can see, just flick into the right. If you look to the right of the screen, you can see. Is it Alaria? Alaria's? Alaria, whatever. The um, paramour of Oberyn Martell. Uh, she was captured in the last episode, and so is one of the other Sand Snakes. I can't remember which one it was. They sort of all blend into one for me. Um, but obviously, two Sand Snakes were taken out. Uh, there's two left. Obviously, uh, the mother and the sort of daughters. Um, and here's Euron returning to King's Landing, sort of parading them in front of everyone, sort of like the uh, shame sequence that is so famous that we've seen before. It's got a kind of vibe, but obviously these, I don't know if these two are going to die straight away or Cersei's going to have a bit of fun with them. It's going to be interesting to see how, what happens with them. And I'm kind of hoping that they just die immediately. It's not dragged out because this, this season's now fast paced. It's probably just going to kick, Mads is going to rip the faces off. And then we move on. But as you can see, uh, Euron's really chuffed with himself here because he's he's delivered this prize, therefore he's going to get uh, what he wants. He's proven to himself being a loyal subject and that the fact that he has the army, he has a fleet that can actually get stuff done for Cersei. So yeah, um, let's back up a little bit. Um, as, you, as you can see, like Cersei's just said, I've drawn first blood. I don't know if this is a direct thing to the attack on uh, the Greyjoy's uh, forces, or it is going to be saying that she's killed the Sand Snakes, she's drawn first blood, she's taken out some major leaders in the um, Dornish army that they've done after the coup, and she's drawn first blood in this battle. It's the first sort of engagement that's been since Danny's come to Westeros, and that she's won it. So it's put Danny on the back foot. She's now, you know showing that she is a force we reckon with still and she can easily get more supporters from this as she's shown that she isn't easily taken out. Um, but that said, if, if we have Cersei doing this and having her sit on this high plateau, she's going to get overconfident. And I think that's where the balance is going to be. It's going to be the queens making these sort of more, it's going to make more sort of ruling decisions, I think, more action against Danny and maybe spread herself too thin, perhaps. I don't know. I don't know how it's going to work out, actually, but um, it's going to put Danny on the back foot, and that's why it's going to sort of tie into Jon Snow later on. So here we have some Unsullied on the left. I'm not sure if this is Jon Snow arriving to the shores of Dragonstone, or this is Theon after he's been rescued. By a couple of survivors and been brought back to Dragonstone. I I cannot say for sure. It could be either way, uh, really. Uh, but we saw this sequence from the back end, I believe, with someone going on their knees. So it could be Theon. It, it's going to be interesting to see actually where Yara is. If 
Euron has revealed to Cersei that he has Yara. Is he going to keep that a bit secret? So Yara's um, his captive, not Cersei's. So Tyrion saying Cersei will be ready. I think this is going to. I think this is directed at Grey Worm when he's just setting off to take uh, Castle Rock. Perhaps I'm not quite sure. Um, this to me looks like Jon Snow, Tyrion. Uh, so Davos, Melisandre, and a couple of Dothraki going up to Dragonstone from the beach. This is why I think it could be Jon Snow arriving. So it makes sense. They've come to the beach, they've been met, they're going up to the keep, and they're going to meet Danny. Um, back up. We see Grey Worm. It looks like he's, you know, either just left and he's looking back at Melisandre or something like that. Um, or this is him looking upon uh, uh, Castle Rock, uh, planning his next his next course of action, the assault on Castle Rock. Um, obviously, we've got Jamie walking through a Lannister fortification of some description. It could be could be Castle Rock. It could be uh, King's Landing. It could be anywhere to be honest. But it looks like there's Lannister forces there, and he's sort of patrolling the area. Uh, you're on. Looks like he's got his horse. He's got his horse in the uh, thing, so he's obviously. You can sort of see. Um, a little, is it Laria? I don't know how I'm forgetting the name of her every single time. But the mother of the sand snakes. It looks like her head is on the left hand side, and she's on her knees, and Euron's bowing to Cersei, saying, Look, this is what I bought you, being all smug about it, and proving that he is a worthy subject. Um, a good sort of sense here. It looks like she's almost in tears here. It looks like she. I, I just want to think that she's accidentally or purposely killed Littlefinger, and she's really shocked about it. Or there's some revelation that's happened. Or maybe, maybe she's been reunited with Bran. Is is this what emotion she's feeling? It, it's hard to tell. Or she's um, overwhelmed by the burden of uh, being left with the responsibility of, responsibility of Winterfell. It's. Uh, it's hard to tell from this face, but it could be in several other things. Uh, see, we've seen before Unsullied breaking into the into what we think is out of Castle Rock after being sieged outside. Some guys let him in. There's already a dude dead on the floor, which has probably been shot off the battlements. Uh, some Unsullied coming on the looks like a beach assault, possibly. And some Lannister forces getting their bow and arrow ready, ready to fire on some Unsullied forces. Uh, unsullied forces and Lannister forces clashing, so we're definitely going to see a battle next episode. And here we go, the biggest thing everyone's been waiting for. Jon Snow and Sir Davos meeting up with Daenerys. It's, it's going to be interesting, I have to say. Not because of what it entails, just how they're going to interact with each other. Is he going to be distrusting of him? Is it going to be sort of a sort of you know best buds, or is it going to be something a bit more sort of racy? Who knows? Uh, because obviously Targaryens are quite incest by nature, so technically aunt on nephew kind of thing going on. Who knows? I'm just really intrigued to see how they're going to interact, how they're going to talk about the situation. Danny is going to be she's on the back foot now. She needs allies, and he is someone that will give her um, a good standing with people of Westeros because he is uh, the man that has come from nothing. He's a bastard, but you know he rules the North. He is a symbol of hope and a symbol of um, what the normal commoner can do, sort of thing. Even though he is technically a royal bloodline, he he has got that persona of the underdog uh, with the people of the North. So he's, he's a powerful ally to have, and I think Daenerys is going to be smart enough to know that, and Tyrion will advise her on that as well. So yeah, there we are. Until next week, essentially. Um, hope you guys have enjoyed it. Just a little glimpse into what the what what's going to happen. Uh, but we'll see uh, next week if it all comes to truth, and we'll see what happens the week after. Can't wait for it. See you guys later. <laughs>